Hello and welcome back to another review with me Kevin from Kevin Grant on Whiskey. This week I've got something that I was able to try during the week there, a, a whiskey tasting of North Star Spirits and I picked out my favourite and I've got one. So you can see, I've seen this bottle before, it looks like a little medicine bottle. Um, it's really different, really quirky, really cool, kind of old style and stuff like that and I, I really enjoyed it. So from the lineup, this was the one that stood out. Different bottle, different taste, and it just really, really stuck with me. So this one is unopened. I did try this whiskey. Uh, I think this was the fourth in the lineup, maybe fifth in the lineup. So my taste buds had obviously been a little well adapted at that point. So now we're trying this. No drams before it. I've had nothing. I've had a little bit of water there just to try and get the palate back to neutral. We're going to get this open, get it in the glass, and see what it's all about. Go through some of the story of it, where it's from, the history and what North Star Spirits is all about, and who Ian, which is Croucher & Co is as well, we'll get into that. So let's get it open first, get it sitting in the glass, give it a little bit of time to, to breathe, it is 50% ABV. If I can get it open would be a good start. So here we go. No wee pop, but I don't think it's going to make a noise. So here we go, get it in the glass. A nice wee dram. And we'll just let that breathe for a little bit and then we'll get the nose in and we'll go about it. So this here is called Periodical. This is by North Star Spirits. So you see their bottles, really cool, really quirky. They've got uh, Vega, uh, Speaker and different styles they've got out there. The Periodical is Croucher & Co. So Ian Croucher is a founder. This was North Star Spirits founded, I think it was 2016. So independent uh, bottler of whiskey. This range periodical, the word periodical plays a huge part and it. it's not just this name they, they made up and thought oh that sounds pretty quirky. With the periodical range it's about they buy casks at times and there's maybe a very very low yield of whiskey in that cask. There's not much left but they'll buy it and they'll bottle it. Some people that buy casks from um, North Stars, from Ian themselves, maybe they don't want a full cask of whiskey they've only got enough to maybe support say 100 bottles and that might leave over 50 bottles worth of whiskey so what ian ends up doing is he will then bottle under the periodic um, label and bring it out to his 50 percent abv and it will never ever be over 50 pounds at retail so you're getting some really good stuff it is a 50 cl bottle as well so you're getting more of it i've got no issues with that whatsoever so this one here, periodically, the first one they came out was a 12-year-old Orkney. And this one now is a 14-year-old Loch Lomond Crofting Gear. Loch Lomond, if we look at that, is 11 different styles they can make Loch Lomond Distillery. Crofting Gear is partly one of their heavily peated styles that they do. The Crofting Gear was one that they used for a lot of the blending purposes at Loch Lomond. So to see it in a single malt range is slightly rarer in comparison. This is 14 years old. It's got the number 180. I think that means there's 180 bottles of this. It does say all are also barrel. Hopefully that does zoom in. I can't really see on this. And the cool thing about it is every single label of the periodical, Ian has a little stamp, a little roller stamp, and he stamps each and every single one. So they'll sit at a different angle and stuff, which I think is really cool. There's a lot of time and effort put into it. Really quirky wee bottle. You can't really see the colour until we've got it in the glass. And it's just a little bit different. The colour straight away though, you can see now whiskey is quite sublime. It is darker, you can tell it's had that Oloroso um, time in the cask with it. So 50% ABV, 14 years old, retails about 44, I think 45 pounds. For 14 year old whiskey, 50 CL, yes. Does that bother me? No, it's all about the quality. So from the other night, I remember it being good. So let's see what it's like on first taste, first pour, neutralised palate, no whiskies beforehand, and we'll go for it. So we'll get this on the nose first. We'll get into it. I've got a little bit of water here, so I'll try it with water as well. And I've got another wee bit that I can speak about too. So let's go into the tasting notes. Let's get this on the nose, see what kind of cool different flavours we might be able to get from this. Straight off the bat, it is a sweet, sweet um, 
the smell that you get it is a bit it's like a sticky it is a sticky toffee sticky fudgy caramelized smell that we get 50 percent abv it doesn't even smell like it's got alcohol in it it smells dangerous it's going to be dangerous because it's going to be easy to drink but again that can sometimes smell light on the, the nose but the alcohol actually on on the palate but we'll see in a second a lot of sweet notes it's more kind of um sugary sweet compared to berry sweet i do get a little bit of kind of your your stewed berries and things like that but it is more of a fudgy toffee kind of smell it does say it's heavily peated i don't get anything on the nose on that which is weird there is a kind of clean kind of fresh barley to it or something as well there's a little bit something i can't get to Maybe chocolatey, chocolatey, fudgy, toffee, sugar. It's sweet on the nose. It's probably the best we do. It's a very sweet ram on the nose. But no peat, which is it's throwing me a little bit. Let's see what it does on the palate. The first the first we taste on the palate without any water. Let's see if it gives us something a bit different. Slam down, There's our peat. A big punch to the to the back of the throat of peat. There's that hay kind of cut grass freshness to it. Chewy big bold mouth feel to it for 50%. It is really on one level on the nose, no alcohol, no peat whatsoever on the palate smashed full of peat alcohol chewy and that chewy texture might come from that smell of the fudge the toffees the sugar that kind of chewy if you imagine eating that as well it's it's really long on the mouthfeel but it is hay it's kind of grass it's fresh cut a little bit of sweetness still there Yeah, it's a clean, clean hit, super long mouthfeel. That's, um, it's really class. I enjoy it. So I have a few drops of water in here. And what I'll get into as well is something, when we'd done the tasting the other night, then Ian was there, it was absolutely superb. It was a cracking night. The, the, the whiskey club and someone had a, a, a super night as well. He was talking about a wowger. And he kept going on about wowger, wowger, wowger. And I've heard it before in, in the industry, but I didn't really know what it meant. So able to find out what it means. So a wowger is a warehouse keepers and owners of warehouse goods. So it's where you can store whiskey, I think, is the way my understanding is. And they have to come out, and HMRC have to come out front of an independent bottler to see that you're doing it all for the right reasons and really do a proper check on you. So it's, I think it's not an easy thing to get. So to be able to start your own independent style, I think a wowger is number one and be really nice to HMRC. I think that's the way to do it. Ian does work from, so the Norsar Spirits is coming from the bottom of his garden, I think as well, and a wee shed that he works from, that's his office, and he's able to produce um, superb whiskies and get his hands on cracking casts. The lineup that we had the other week, uh, last week, was, was superb. We really enjoyed it. So adding the water on the nose, it doesn't change much. It still stays sweet. It maybe it maybe drops off a lot of the um, really sweet notes. It's bringing more to the forefront now. A kind of leathery, a leathery hit, like um, maybe a little bit of strawberry now too. Strawberry and leather notes to it. Yeah, strawberry leather. The the real sweet sweet notes have kind of dropped off. Maybe just because I'm used to that and I'm starting to smell through and find other things. We'll see what it does on the palate. That's what I'm more intrigued about now with the peat. I've only put a little bit of water in there, might add a little bit more, but the 50% doesn't really give you that 
full alcohol in it, you know it's there. And I think 50 is a really good number. It stays strong with the peat. If you like a peat whiskey, if you like something that's maybe going to catch you off guard a little bit. This is something I would go for. If you like a really long mouthfeel, this hits that as well. Something sweet. You can definitely tell it's been sherried. Sherried peat <clears throat> is what we've got here. The water there doesn't change much. It still stays that kind of the hay, the the grass, the, the peat notes to it. The peat is quite powerful, which I like. That's not an issue for me. But I think if you smell this on the nose, maybe in a blind tasting, it's thrown me. I never guessed there was peat in there. I had to double check that it definitely said crofting gear, which it does. It's stunning. I really enjoy it. It's for the price, as I say, it's always under £50 for every time a periodical bottle comes out, which I think you can rely on. And I, I, I enjoy it. Would the only thing you would say you would probably like more, you would like it to be a 70 CL bottle, but I totally understand that having a lower yield, if you only get 180 bottles out of a 50 CL, I can't do the math on it, but you're not going to get as much if it was a 70 CL and the price would go up. So to hit a price point, to hit an ABV, natural colour, non chill filtered, they've done the right thing and keeping it in this cool wee medicine bottle. I like it. I do. You might see I've got sporting some new bling today as well. So my wee plug in here is I've done an NFL fantasy league and my first ever season at it and I was able to win a Super Bowl ring from my team winning. So this is my, my bling for the night. I'd like to say thanks to, to Ronnie for that, for inviting me into the league and being able to win it. So cheers to you, Ronnie. One last wee thing is I've got my little book here with all my tasting notes and things in it and little notes I take. I took that with me to the Whiskey Festival last week. We ended up in the Bon Accord afterwards. If you've seen last week's video, you'll see kind of wee videos of me about the day. It was difficult to, to record, but I really enjoyed it. I did um, hand my book out and lots and lots of people have signed it. Um, so I'll maybe put some wee snippets up on Instagram of what people have said. Ian has wrote an absolutely cracking thing in it. I've not asked him if I can read it out. So maybe reach out to him and see if I can read it out next week. Um, if, if he'll let me do it. But I've not got much more on this. It's an enjoyable dram. Good price. Good quality. I like it. It's up my street for PT, Sherry. Two things I really enjoy. I'm going to sit back. I've got a fair wee dram left. I'm off for the weekend now. So... Sit back, enjoy this, put the feet up, and and have a quiet uh, a quiet weekend is what the plan is. Um, if you're not subscribed, hit subscribe. You'll see me every single Friday putting a video out. I've got trying to do as much content as I can on Instagram as well. So hit like, subscribe, leave me comments if you've tried this before or anything similar to it. And would you like this whiskey too? So, as I say, you know what I'm going to do now. I'll go back to the living room, sit back, enjoy it, take some more wee notes, and see how the night ends up. I'd like to raise a glass to everyone. The world's a crazy place just now, so my advice is be nice to everyone, raise a glass to Ukraine, and hopefully this all ends soon enough and we can all get back to to being happy and civilised again. But as always, I've been Kevin from Kevin Grant on Whiskey. Enjoy me next week. Let's talk whiskey. Sludge.